Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Customs House Museum Monday Morning Podcast. I'm your host Shay, and today I'm being joined on the phone by our special guest artist, Sandra Painter-Washburn. Thank you for joining us today, Sandy. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. So, let me start by asking you this. When did you first decide that you wanted to become an artist? It was a very early age. Um, I remember as even a small child, like when I was three or four years old, I always asked for a coloring book and crayons. That was the main thing I looked forward to at Christmas because I would wear my crayons down to a nub. And the bigger box of crayons, the richer I was. Um, My (laughs) father always recognized and encouraged my interest in art. He was a musician. So he understood, you know, about creativity, and he he was happy to see that I had uh, artistic interest. And when I was in elementary school, I was always known as the artist in the class. Um, And so it was natural for me to major in art when I went to college at UNC in Greensboro, North Carolina. What made you decide to major in art education? I wanted to be able to get a job. (laughs) (laughs) Because, um, well... I didn't know uh, whether just being a studio artist would, certainly nothing wrong with that, but possibly would not be as employable. Uh, My grandmother was a teacher, my sister was a teacher, and that seemed like a logical career for me where I could connect my love of art and also be a teacher. Well, it sounds like you had some great people around you growing up, and um, were they sources of inspiration for you, or is there anything in particular that you draw upon when going through the creative process? Well, there's a long list. (laughs) My great-grandmother, Virginia Thompson, was an artist, and some of my aunts have paintings that she did back in the in the 20s, and she was she was quite good. I grew up on a farm, so the patterns in nature and the colors and patterns of the seasons were something we always felt intensely as children. Um, I love the patterns and textures and ancient textiles and pottery. And in terms of art history, my favorite art movements are abstract expressionism of the 1950s in New York. I would love to have been a part of that. Of course, I love the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists. I like Art Nouveau because of the pattern, the balance, and the symmetry in that form of art. And my favorite artists are Kandinsky, Gustav Klimt, O'Keeffe, Hopper, and Joseph Stella. Those are the ones that I keep going back to again and again, and I'm intrigued and amazed by the work that they did. And the work you create yourself covers a wide variety of mediums and subject matter, Are there any particular mediums that you enjoy working with? My favorite is acrylic. I've been using acrylic since the early 90s. I did a lot of watercolor prior to that, and when I started working with acrylic, I found that acrylic had the possibilities of watercolor because you can dilute it and make it into washes, and you can do layering and veiling and get the watercolor effects. But the advantage of acrylics was that once that initial layer had dried, I didn't have to worry about it, you know, moving around when I came over with subsequent layers of different colors, and I just love that you could build up those rich effects with layering. I like that it's, you know, able to be used on canvas as well as paper. You can work in pasta with it. You can mix it with a wide variety of texture mediums that are available on the market now. That increases the range of possibilities phenomenally. Um, The color saturation of acrylic paint is is incomparable, particularly golden and Matisse acrylics. Those are my favorites, though I work also with other brands. And I like bringing in mixed media, such as pastel and oil sticks uh, for resist effects. I like bringing in collage elements like gold and copper leaf or rice paper or text from old books. Um, I saved the fortunes out of Chinese fortune cookies, and I probably have a box of 500 of those, and I sometimes incorporate them. Uh, they're in a lot of my paintings, though. You may not
not be able to see them because they get covered up, but they're there. I, I love that you incorporate the, the fortune cookie fortunes in there. I think that, personally, I think that's really neat. Um, One time I did a painting, and I had 100 movie tickets, uh, movie stubs. And I took a big canvas, and I gelled 100 movie tickets to this piece before I ever did anything else to it. Then I just painted it like a regular painting. But you could see all those little square shapes under there, but you couldn't tell what they were. I, I like that effect, too. Oh, that, I mean, so many of your pieces have such depth to them, and I know myself and other staff members and guests have, you know, tried to analyze and see what you've included in your work, and it just makes it so special and intriguing. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm, uh, you know, I've come to enjoy most of what I do. You know, there are moments when you agonize over a certain piece that's not going the way you would like it to, and sometimes you just have to give up control and let the piece take over, and uh, sometimes you have to bring it back into submission. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really shows that you enjoy what you do. Oh, thank you. Um, I did have someone ask me, though, what you used to create the layers where you dug into the paint. Did you use a tool, or? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, now, I used uh, a heavy gel medium, and I often do this after I have begun a painting and it's going along fairly well and I want some heavy texture somewhere, uh, I'll just take uh, that heavy gel medium and layer it over the painting with um, a palette knife and get it the way I want it and then I'll scrape the patterns into it. I think that's what you mean with um, color shaper. A color shaper is a tool that's similar to a brush. But rather than having the bristles on the end, it has a rubber tip that's flexible, and you can scrape that stuff away in, in design. Oh, well, thank you for solving that riddle for us, because we were wondering. <laughs> and it has to completely dry before you uh, paint over it after you've done that, kind of quickly, because when the, when the gel starts to set, you can't really carve into it anymore. And then you let that completely dry, and then you go ahead and paint over it as though it's part of the painting. Well, thank you once again for answering that for us. Oh, you're welcome. And um, the next question I have is, what made you decide to expand your reach into jewelry making? Well, about five years ago, a friend of mine who happens to be from Russia had come back from a trip to Russia, and she brought me a present of some Russian amber and some malachite beads. And she said, I just saw these and they made me think of you because of the colors and I thought maybe you'd find a way to use them. And I kept them for a while and then um, I decided I'd like to make them into a couple of necklaces. So I taught myself um, beading techniques. I uh, bought a couple of those jewelry books and taught myself beading and made a couple of necklaces out of those stones. and. And I started being aware of gemstones after that. I started looking at them when I, you know, go shopping and seeing them in certain places and um, came to realize that they have healing properties and there are different varieties within each one and there's a lot of things to learn about gemstones and I've always been attracted to the colors that they had because they're uh, natural and subtle colors yet they can be very intense and, and that's the way I like my work to be. So um, I started working with more and more gemstones, and then eventually I saw the need to add silver or copper or other forms of metal into the work. So to, just to take it to the next level and, and, and make it look professional, and I wanted to have a more creative quality and a more personal quality than just using the beads alone to capture it. So I learned how to do cold connections with metal. Uh, then I learned soldering and enameling and cabochon setting and chain making. And so that my jewelry now is, is almost all handmade, but I still like to incorporate the gemstones into the bench forged uh, sterling silver and copper work. I just think it gives a very unique uh, piece that it becomes unique to the wearer. You know, people associate that piece of jewelry with, with the wearer because it is different. Well, your work is definitely unique and beautiful. Oh, thank you. And before we go, I wanted to mention that um, you have a new website, is that correct? 
Yes, yes, I do. Um, it's www.painterwashburn.com. Um, I collaborated with web designer Bill Ramsey, who did a wonderful job of setting it up and with places for all of my different styles of art and different types of art and my news page. I have a blog. Um, and also, of course, my autobiographical information is on there as well and my contact information. And do you still run workshops? Yes, I do. Um, I am currently working at Art Creations at Hamilton Place in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm the director of art education there. I'm, I'm in charge of setting up classes and hiring teachers and creating the class schedule. And I teach my classes there on Wednesdays. In the morning, I have an experimental water media, which is predominantly acrylic. And then in the afternoon, I have acrylic floral and uh, landscape design class. Oh, well, I will certainly be sure to check those out, and I hope that all our listeners do, too. Sounds like great opportunities. Well, I'm also available to teach workshops to community arts organizations. And if anybody would like to speak with me about uh, availability or what possible topics I can teach in a workshop, they can contact me through the website. Well, great. And just so everyone knows, your work will be on display at the Customs House Museum until March 11th. I'm also going to be on hand on uh, March the 2nd. Uh, that'll be the closing reception. And if anybody would like to ask questions about the work, and, and I think that Terry Jordan has, is wanting me to do make some remarks about my work, so I'm willing to do that, too, if, if she wants me to do that. I'm sure she will, and I know we'll all be looking forward to it. Um, thank Appreciate you. it, and I have enjoyed speaking with you, and uh, this is a great opportunity. Thank you for the exposure. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And I hope that all you listeners out there will join us again on January 30th for Episode 8. And until that time, I hope that you all take care and have a wonderful week.